Hello, everyone. As most of you have requested, in this video, I am going to show you how you can install Moodle on the Windows Server. For this demonstration, I am using a Windows Server 2016 machine. So, without any further ado, let's jump into today's part, and your subscription is the most valuable thing for us to make informative videos like this. So, in this demonstration, I am going to show you how you can host a Moodle site using the Windows IIS server. Before beginning the installation, we need to download a few software packages which are needed to run the Moodle installation. First, we need the latest PHP package. To download it, go to the official PHP page and click on the download button. There you can see available PHP versions. Let's download the current stable version. Click the link for the Windows download, and you can see this page. As we are going to use this with the IIS server, we need to download the non-thread safe versions of PHP. You can read more details about versions from the left panel. So, let's download the zip package for the non-thread safe version. Then, to install Moodle in Windows Server, we need to have the Visual C++ redistributable for Visual Studio. You can download it from the link in this page. Here you need to select the 64-bit package. Next, we need MariaDB to store our database. Let's go to their official site and download it. In here, click the download button. Let's download the latest long-term release from here. As the site says, it is version 10.11. Let's grab that. Here we need to download the MSI package. Select that and hit the download button. Finally, we need the Moodle package. Go to their official page and click the download menu at the top. Here you can see the latest Moodle version. Let's get that. Here we need to get the zip package for the latest Moodle. Let's go with the latest official update. Click download to get it. Also, here you can see all the software requirements with the supporting versions. Now we have got all we need. So, let's jump into the configuration and installation. First, let's install the Visual C++ redistributable package. You can simply right-click and install it. Next, let's configure the PHP. First, extract the PHP zip file and rename it with a short name and move it to the C drive of your server. Now, in the PHP folder, let's create another folder called temp. This is the folder that we use to store all the temporary files and the error log for PHP. Now we need to modify the security setting of this folder to give permission to the IUSR account, which is the built-in account used by IIS for anonymous access. To do that, right click on temp folder and select properties. In the property window, select the security tab. In that, click the edit button. From there, you can add the account by clicking the add button. Here we can type the account name. In this case, IUSR. Then click the check name button and click OK. As you can see now, that account is in the list and below, you can check the permissions that account has. Click apply then OK to proceed. Then we need to add the path of the PHP folder 
to the environmental variables. To do that, let's go to the advanced system settings. There you have this environmental variables option. Under the system variable, edit the path variable to add the PHP location. Copy the PHP path. Then in the edit environment variable window, click new and paste the path, then click OK to proceed. Next, find the PHP, any production file and rename it into PHP, any. Then change the configurations as I do. So that's all with the PHP configuration. Now let's configure our IS server. In this Windows server machine, I got the IIS server pre-installed for this demonstration. If you don't have this installed first, add the IIS role to your server. When you are adding this role, make sure to select the CGI module in Add Roles and Features Wizard. First, let's go to the IIS server. To do that in the Server Manager, you can find the IIS Manager tool. Open that, and there you need to select the local domain. In my case, it shows the server's name as the local domain. Click on that, and there you can see these options. First, Open the Handler Mappings and right-click, then select the Add Module Mapping. Here we are going to add a module mapping for the FAST CGI module. Follow me and fill the details as I do.
Next, we need to configure MIME types. To do that, select the local domain again and open the MIME types. Here, click on Add and you can follow my steps. Now we need to change the default document to load when the site is open. To do that, go to the default document here and add index.php to the list and move it to the top. Finally, open the FAST CGI settings and update the settings as this. Other changes we can make during the installation. Now let's check whether the local host redirects the incoming requests to the index.php by creating a sample index file in our web root folder. In that, let's add a simple code to show PHP information. Now let's close this window and restart our local server. Now let's browse our default site to check whether we are good to go. As you can see, our IIS server redirects our request properly. And there we have the PHP information. Now we'll install our database application. In this demonstration, we are going to configure Moodle with the MariaDB. So, let's start the installation. Tick this and click Next. Next again. Here, we need to provide a password for the RootDB user account. Then tick this Use UTF-8 as default server's character set. Here I am going to keep these fields as default. If you want, you can configure any other port for this, and the pool size you can specify according to the RAM available. Here I am going with defaults. Click the Install button to complete the installation. Now the database server successfully installed in our Windows service. Now let's open the GUI and do the configuration part. Here, let's create a new session. You can give any name for the session. I'll give it as Moodle session. Next, give your root password, which we gave at the installation and click open. From here, we are going to create a new database for our Moodle site. Right-click on the session name, go to Create New and click on Database. Here you need to give a name for your database and click OK. Now, let's add a user account to our Moodle database. Click on this icon and you can see the User Manager window. To create a new user, click on the Add. Here, give a username and a password to our new user account and click on the Add object to select the database. Select the Moodle database and click OK. Now give all permissions here and click Save and Close. Now we are ready to start the Moodle installation. During the installation, we can sort out other requirements one by one. So, let's begin. First, Let's extract the Moodle package. I will pause the video until this is completed.
Now the extraction is completed and we can copy this Moodle folder to our web root directory. This is the web root directory of IIS server. Let's paste the Moodle folder here. Until this is copied, let's come back to the INET pub folder and create a new folder to store the Moodle data. We are creating this folder here to restrict public access to this data folder. Now, let's give the needed permission to the IUSR account. OK. Now we are ready. Let's begin the Moodle installation. Open a web browser and type localhost slash Moodle. If everything is fine, this should start the Moodle installation. Choose the language and click Next. Here we need to verify the paths which we are going to use. Here you can see the Moodle data path as the folder which we have created. Click Next. Here, we need to select our database server. In our case, the MariaDB. Click Next. Here we need to give these details. Give the database username and the password. Other fields can keep defaults. and click Next. OK. As this message says, let's create a config.vp file in our Moodle directory with the given code. Now click on Next. Here I have an issue. So let me solve this. OK. So the issue was, I have not configured the extensions correctly. Let me show you the correct way. The extensions need to be mentioned in this way. Because in PHP extension folder, those are named in that way. Once I did that, I closed the installation and reopened the localhost slash Moodle in the browser. If you are following this video, make sure to change those extension properly. Now let's click Continue. OK. Now Moodle shows these issues. Let me clear one by one.
OK. Now let's try reloading. OK, let's restart our IIS server and try again. So, as you can see, the problems are solved and we got one issue here. Let me solve that too. OK, now we are good to go. You can ignore these issues, as those are not critical. So, let's continue. Let me pause and continue once this is done, as this takes time. OK, now our installation is completed, and we can complete the installation by filling in some details about our Moodle website. On this page, you need to fill in these details to start the administration of your site. The admin account created here is the main admin account for your Moodle site. Here you need to give a site name and some details about your LMS. Once you've filled in all the necessary details, you can save the changes and proceed to the LMS site. So that's all you need to do. Once you are on this page, you can customize the learning management system as you need. If you want to learn the administration part, you can watch our previous videos. So guys, that's all for this video. If you need any clarification, drop a comment here so I can help with it.